time for our uh, press review to take a look at the major headlines in the Egyptian dailies and to analyze them with our guests in the studio. And we're most delighted to be joined today by Mrs. Nafisa Sobok. She's a political commentator. Thank you so much for joining us on The Breakfast Show. You're welcome. Uh, as usual, dear viewers, we start off with uh, Lahram and we read its main banner in the front page, an Egyptian-Saudi coordination council for joint cooperation. Cairo and Riyadh stressed the agreement in visions regarding the different regional causes during his meeting with the Saudi foreign minister, the president receives the invitation of the custodian of the two holy shrines to attend the fourth Arab Latin summit. The CC says Egypt is keen on the security of Saudi Arabia and do not accept any harm to it. And Shukri and Al Jubair say the, what we care about is, is serious security and stability away from any foreign intervention. And uh, also, we're still with the issue and from the Yom Seba front page we read once again no differences between Cairo and Riyadh regarding the Syrian crisis. Shukri and Al-Jubair stress co cooperation and agree agreement regarding the Syrian file and agree to carry out consultations every three months. President Sisi meets with the Saudi foreign minister Adir Al-Jubair in Cairo. The aim of the meeting is to review a number of regional issues of mutual concern. Uh, Mrs. Nafisa, your comment on this uh, meeting and uh, the Egyptian, uh, the significance of this meeting in light of the Saudi-Egyptian uh, relations. It's it's a very important uh, signs coming out of, mm -hmm. of the meetings yes. actually because the 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 Syria the Saudi situation regarding mm -hmm. Syria mm -hmm. and the Egyptian situation mm -hmm. was ha had some differences before, yes. Yes. but now. After a couple of declarations by Saudi officials mm -hmm. accepting that al-Assad al can can be allowed to stay for a transitional limited period, yes. which is actually the Egyptian situation since the very beginning of the Syrian war, mm -hmm. which is a, which means that finally Egypt and Saudi Arabia are almost exactly on the same line regarding yes. this Syria. very Syria serious. Uh, security national security issue for for egypt and mm -hmm. actually for saudi arabia before egypt because yes. it's 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 very threatening mm -hmm. to saudi arabia mm -hmm. so this agreement is very important it means that we can step forward to mm -hmm. work on solving the solution mm -hmm. and cooperation yeah. with other uh so uh, in partners. light of these developments do you see an end to the syrian crisis soon it cannot be soon. It's it's not that easy. So many so many regional and international I actors mean, are, are, are involved. involved. Yes. So mm -hmm. it's it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. But at least mm -hmm. regarding the Arab uh, situation, the most important two countries are Saudi Arabia and Egypt. And as Egypt and Saudi Arabia are on the same line, this, this is very help. helpful. Yes. And uh, dear viewers, back uh, to uh, Ahram's uh, front page, and we read the rerun in the first phase of the parliamentary <coughs> election starts today with the expats vote. Today, expats starting voting in the rerun of the first phase of the parliamentary elections. The High Elections Committee says we are committed to carry out the rerun in four constituencies. And also, dear viewers, still with the same issue, but from El Masri Liom's uh, front page, we read the marathon of the Arab of, of the House of Representatives elections uh, appeals ignite competition in govern rates. The appeals hit the govern rates before the rerun of the first phase, and the results of four constituencies annulled. Egypt's expats begin on Monday voting in the rerun of the first phase of the parliamentary elections, and also the elections are held in 139 embassies and consulates around the world. The tau the Toe day rerun starts at 9 a.m. and closes at 9 p.m. according to the local time of every country. And also, dear viewers, uh, the, uh, this uh, issue this is very important. It's um, also um, uh, tackled in El Yom Seba, and uh, we read the Parliament of Appeals. The runoff starts today for Egyptian expats and 13 government governmental appeals to cancel the verdict of the rerun of El Raml elections. And the High Elections Committee says we are committed to carry out the rerun in four constituencies. And Egyptians inside Egypt start on Tuesday voting in the rerun of the first phase of the parliamentary elections. The first phase compromises 14 government rates. On Sunday, the electoral silence period began in the rerun of the first phase 
of the parliamentary elections. Uh, Mrs. Nafisa, uh, also a, a very important uh, development here. Uh, we're just, uh, the runoffs for the parliamentary elections are around uh, the corner. Um, your, um, your assessment to the electoral process and your expectations for the rerun. One very important point to be noted is mm -hmm. that the schedule of the elections now is more uh, yeah. extended than, yes. than before, yes. which means that all the legal process about appeals and uh, court verdicts can be uh, declared before mm -hmm. moving to the next step mm -hmm. easily, which, which is very important and I think it's very helpful. Despite we have four uh, constituencies, uh, mm -hmm. elections had mm -hmm. been annulled because mm -hmm. of some basic uh, mistakes regarding mm -hmm. the, the lists of the candidates mm -hmm. themselves. It's mm -hmm. but still at least uh, they can go to the rerun mm -hmm. among the other uh, uh, candidates mm -hmm. later on. So it's, it's, uh, it's much better and much uh, easier and less uh, problematic yeah. than going to the elections on one or two days all over the, the country. Mm -hmm. uh, so your expectations <coughs> for the turnout, uh, is it going to be similar to the turnout of the uh, first uh, of the I, mean, I think the after stage. what media had done and the different calls out mm -hmm. for people to go sure. out it mm -hmm. there is a possibility a possibility to mm -hmm. to turn to be mm -hmm. higher yeah, higher the during the phase mm -hmm. especially when for example a couple of uh, governor rates which normally well known as high voting governor rates are mm -hmm. coming in in the second phase. Yes. For example, Sharqiyya and Munafiyya are, are well known, very well known to be uh, high voters in, in all elections. So mm -hmm. I think it would be a little bit uh, um, higher. Yes. Um, and uh, dear viewers, back to some uh, local news and uh, also very important uh, development regarding the weather. From Al Ahram, uh, we read from its front page Storms and floods kill five in Alexandria and cut the roads in some governorates. Rain reveals the failure of those responsible. The death of five people after being electrocuted after a, tra a tram cable fell on them in Alexandria, and the CC assigns the Prime Minister to quickly deal with the results of the bad weather conditions. Closing the ports of Dameta and Sukhna. And navigation continues in the Suez Canal and dear viewers still with the same issue which made the banner the main banner in the Masri Diom and we read the government sinks in Alexandria and uh, five people were killed and 11 injured in the first days of winter and the president assigned the government to intervene the presidential media office announced that President Abdel Fattah Sisi called for an urgent meeting with the full lineup of the cabinet on Monday at the presidential palace earlier the Sisi instructed the government in coordination with all the state institutions and the armed forces to take all measures to contain the situation and all the repercussions that have occurred as a result of the unstable weather conditions in some cities and still with the same issue about the weather that is making headlines in almost uh, all the major Egyptian dailies but this time from Yom Seba we are sinking in negligence this is the banner the main banner the streets of Alexandria sink in the waters of the rain and six people killed after a tram electric wire fell on them dear viewers uh, we're going to be taking a look at uh, the developments that took place in, uh, we're going to be taking a look at the developments that took place in Alexandria uh, in this report. Let's take a listen and then we'll be back to resume the press review uh, in this edition of The Breakfast Show. Severe weather swept across the Middle East on Sunday, sending torrents of uncollected garbage through the streets of Beirut and killing six people in Egypt, five of whom were electrocuted by a fallen power cable. The cable from a tramway in the coastal city of Alexandria landed in streets flooded with water. Health officials said a six-person drowned when he was trapped in his car by the flood waters. 
Alexandria is Egypt's second largest city and a major port and shipping and trade center. President Abdel Fattah Sisi ordered the government to provide aid to the Alexandria area. State news agency MENA reported heavy rains in Egyptian governorates, with authorities closing the port of Al Ain al Sukhna near the southern end of the Suez Canal due to high winds and waves. Sand storms and flash floods hit parts of the Sinai Peninsula. Cairo saw a rare rainstorm. Alexandria's seaside Corniche, the jewel of a cosmopolitan city, was inundated in many areas. In Lebanon, heavy rains caused floodwaters to mix with the mounds of uncollected garbage, raising public health concerns. The country has been in the grip of a months-long trash crisis that started when the government shut down the city's main landfill without finding an alternative. The crisis ignited mass protests against the government, which has failed to provide a number of basic services and is widely seen as... Welcome back, uh, dear viewers. Uh, Mrs. Nafisa, as we saw in the report, uh, very disappointing uh, pictures that we saw in Alexandria. And according to the banners, um, uh, all the um, most of the mainstream media is blaming the government for for the for this um, catastrophic scene that we saw in Alexandria. Mm, mm, uh, yes, of course, the government should be. Uh, blamed, but mm. it's not only this government, it's mm. the previous one and the previous one and the previous one. Mm -hmm. It's for, for years and years we have the same problems in mm. the same places and the same governor rates and actually no real plan is being started to be implemented on the ground. Yes. So the situation is going to go worse and worse every year. Mm -hmm. So we really need a plan really need to effectuate the localities mm. uh, rule in yeah. in this regard so it's because an, it's, it's uh, not this is the outcome of uh, an accumulation of negligence for years and years for years and years and mm. no one new c new comes to start solving it mm -hmm. i'm not saying that a governor should come tomorrow and everything would be perfect tomorrow mm. but at least Every governor should have a plan yes. based on a strategy for the government. Mm -hmm. So in this plan, for example, let's say in one place it, will, it should take one year and mm -hmm. in other place it can, can last for five to ten years to mm -hmm. be implemented. Mm -hmm. But at least someone should start yes. today mm -hmm. instead of every year we, we are going to more lives and more life in, in such a disaster. It's, it's a very stupid disaster. Mm -hmm. A couple of days with some rains, it's mm -hmm. not even heavy rain actually compared mm -hmm. to the, the nature of Alexandria's weather. Yes. It's not the worst rain that would mm -hmm. come to Alexandria. Mm -hmm. So someone has to start moving yes. directly. Mm -hmm. And actually it should not be only the military. The military move to save what can be saved. Mm -hmm which is very important and it, it, it's helpful. Mm -hmm. And we, we all value this rule. Mm -hmm. But you cannot just, you know, depend, depend on our, them yeah. in every single detail. Yes. So they have major rules mm -hmm. and they have bigger responsibilities mm -hmm. to take care of. Yes. So in, in, in state of crisis and disaster, the interview, which is very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we have to go on. Without the and this is not their responsibility. This is the responsibility of the mu municipalities that are doing nothing, just uh, uh, sitting there, and uh, they should focus, I believe, more. This on is their rule, basically. Mm -hmm. This is their real rule. Mm -hmm. So they do nothing in this regard. Mm -hmm. So either they work or they just, you know, Sit find. There. Mm -hmm. Step away from it, so at least you will just save the money that's being spent on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, instead of just laying the blame on someone that is not responsible. Mm -hmm. And uh, dear viewers, moving to Al Masri Lium, uh, we read from its front page. Damati says the state-of-the-art equipment to reveal the secrets of the pyramids next year. Hilal says the one who built the pyramids was an architect and not a historian. And Zazor says the project will make Egypt once again the shrine of tourism. The la and uh, this was the statements made by uh, the minister, uh, Hisham Zazor, the minister of uh, tourism.
viewers. We have uh, this uh, report. Let's take a listen and then we'll be back to resume the press review. A group of Egyptian and foreign experts launched on Sunday a new bid to unravel the secrets of the pyramids, including a search for hidden chambers inside four famed pharaonic monuments. Architects and scientists from Egypt, France, Canada, and Japan will use modern infrared technology and advanced detectors to map two pyramids at Giza and the two Dahshur pyramids south of Cairo. Minister of Antiquities Mamdouh announced at a news conference that this special group will study these pyramids to see whether there are still any hidden chambers or other secrets inside them. Damati said that the engineers and architects will conduct the survey using non-destructive technology that will not harm the pyramids. Experts said the study known as scan pyramids will also be a fresh attempt to understand how the monuments were built in the first place. Khufu's pyramid, also known as the Great Pyramid of Giza, the tallest of all the pyramids, was built by the son of Snefru, founder of the Fourth Dynasty, while the Kefri's pyramid, or Kefrin, was built by the son of Khufu. The two pyramids at Dahshur were built by Snefru. Project Scan Pyramids is expected to last until the end of 2016. Damati said the technologies that would be used to search the four pyramids could also be useful to look for a possible hidden chamber in King Tutankhamun's tomb, which may be the burial place of Queen Nefertiti. Archaeologists have never discovered the mummy of the legendary beauty. However, renowned British archaeologist Nicholas Reeves said in a recent study that her tomb could be in a secret chamber adjoining Tutankhamun's tomb in the Valley of the Kings at Luxor, southern Egypt. Egypt has already approved using radars to search the Boy King's tomb, which was found by British Egyptologist Howard Carter in 1922. Welcome back, uh, dear viewers, and uh, Mrs. Uh, Nafisa, after we saw this uh, report, if you can tell us uh, your take on the significance of this project and its potential impact on the hardly hit tourism sector. Maybe I'm a little bit not that optimistic, I'm more pessimistic in this regard, because mm. it's not actually only concerning the tourism ministry. Mm. It's concerning a cooperation between every single ministry that has to do with any tourists that enter this country. Yes. So it's, they are exerting efforts. They are trying to work as hard as they can. Mm -hmm. But let's say if they are, for what happened when Morgan Freeman has mm -hmm. visited Egypt, yes. actually someone mm -hmm. uh, interpreted him to the the police are uh, asking why he is not taking some uh, you know mm. why is he m uh, taping this uh, yeah. this m movie and mm. things like that mm -hmm. so you will you will have such a stupid person in different this places this is a barrier it's, for for the uh, flourishment a, of the uh, of the industry exactly it's it's not about the tourism ministry mm. it's not about the antiquity ministry mm. it's about how Every single minister and the official in his post understand that attracting tourists back to Egypt is very important and yes. vital to our future, mm -hmm. near future. Yes. So it, it has to be, all of them should, should be working to facilitate things and use, actually, when you have a very international famous figure, yes. you should use this. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, the dear view on to our last item we chose for today and it uh, has to do with some financial uh, news it's from al-ahram's front page 
investment projects in the sectors of tourism, agriculture, and industry. The International Economic Conference concluded its activities in the governorate of Marsa Matruh on Sunday. The two-day gathering held under the auspices of President Abdel Fattah Sisi is aimed at presenting investment opportunities in the governorate and also witnessed the signing of a number of investment agreements. Governor of Matruh, Ali Abu Zaid, said that two tourist projects were also signed to develop the Agiba area and the area of Rommel. Also, Abu Zaid added that a number of industrial and agricultural projects south of Matruh and in the Alamein area were also inked. Hundreds of Egyptian, Arab, and foreign investors have attended the international conference. Um, Mrs. Nvisa, your comment on this uh, conference? Actually, my, my most, uh, the, the most obvious thing in this is <coughs> It's not about the economy, it's about, you know, developing some area that had been forgotten, forgotten for years and mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. And actually from those being forgetting those, those areas for years, mm -hmm. actually we faced some security risks. Yes. So now we are heading to develop this area mm -hmm. instead of causing us trouble, so they should be instead more... Instead of being marginalized, they're developing these areas. They are developing these areas mm -hmm. so that you are more, more secure. Mm -hmm. Such kinds of projects is not, you know, the kind of project that would next day or directly the next year would benefit the people. Long term. But actually, starting mm. to think this way, starting mm. developing the, the marginalized and forgetting areas for years is very important and is very needed. Yes. Uh, I'm afraid we're running out of time, no. but we really do appreciate uh, your insight. Mrs. Uh, Nafisa Sabah, a political commentator, thank you so much for being with York. us on The Breakfast Show. York. Thank, thank you. you. And uh, dear viewers, by this we wrap up the press review segment in this edition of The Breakfast Show. And uh, dear viewers, a short break and we'll be back to resume the remaining segments of The Breakfast Show live on Nile TV International. Thank you.